I've been making pots for 48 years. I started at UND years ago when I got my master's degree in geology. I started throwing pots in. What's interesting about the geology and pottery connection is that it's both science. What I do is I make rocks. You know, and that whole process of the clay itself, you know, I know all about the clay and I know all about the minerals that go into the glazes that I make and how they melt and how they affect each other. And that whole process is science, as well as then the art aspect of it, of throwing and you're visualizing what you want to make and you do it. And what you see when I throw a pot is a, a reflection of that 48 years of throwing. I make stoneware pottery, and it's designed to be used in everyday situations. And the way I glaze and fire, everything's very safe to use. It's very hard. It can go into dishwashers. And I make a huge variety of things, you know, plates, mugs, really large pots that are more decorative, you might say. I throw all kinds of bowls. It's one of my favorite things to throw, all different sizes. I like to do sets where they can all nest within each other because I think that that's a nice way of storing them. And so I think about size and shape of all the things, but mostly what I make is pieces to serve with. When I'm throwing, it's the same process all the time. Well, first of all, you have to have the idea. Same amount of clay, two different forms. I usually know what basically I'm going to make. The clay itself is a really important factor, and I use what they call stoneware clay. And stoneware clay is a blend of clays from all over different parts of the United States that are blended together so that you can use it easily in your hands. It's not too hard, it's not too soft. And then I wedge it up or I knead it before I use it, so it makes sure that it's all blended together nicely before I throw. If you don't think about it, you'll put it right in the center. <laughs> you throw the ball of clay onto the wheel, centering it. Centering is the most important thing. If not, when it's spinning around, the, the pot's gonna be wobbling and you can't work with it. After that, you open it up, and when you pull it up to the top, if it's not in center, part of the lip will be taller than the other because it's it's not in center, so you're always centering. Just a little bit of water. And you want to leave a nice ring of clay at the top. You want the, the lip of the pot to be nice and firm like these right here. Nice. So those processes are in my mind every time I make a pot. But sometimes in the throwing process, the clay speaks to you. And you can either go with it or not. The better that you get at making pots, the more you can control every aspect of it. All the glazes are very similar. Every time I pour them, you know, you can't pour it exactly right, but they will be, you know, unique to themselves. So if you have, let's say, a tendon or replace settings, I can make them all go together. And on big pots, when you pour the glaze on the pot, as it wraps itself around the glaze itself, all of a sudden it does something totally different, and I allow that to happen. And so every time when I open my kiln to look at them after firing it, it's always a very unique experience for me and for anyone else who happens to be there to look at it. I have built five kilns over the years and I make what's called a car kiln and that means that the floor and the door and all the pots and the shelves and everything are on a track. And I can pull that out from the main body of the kiln when I open the kiln. It's always very exciting. It takes a month of throwing and glazing and preparing to fill up my kiln and then to fire it which takes another 12 hours and two days to cool. So by the time ready to open it up <laughs> and see the result of what I've done. You can tell when they're fired perfectly when they ring like that. And you know there's no cracks, there's nothing problem, the, the pot is perfect. What I try to do is have something in someone's house so that that's for their traditions. I look at it as from my hands to yours you know, because it literally comes from my hands. I would say that it took me 10 years before I could actually throw what I thought. In those 10 years, there was always pots that were close to exactly what I wanted, 
but it took a while to and a lot of practice so that I could think about a pot, sit down and throw it. It feels really good. I feel really lucky that I have found something, you know, that I can do, feel really good about it, that people appreciate it, and they have supported me all these years. Funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.